you have those two engines, the engines of creativity, but as well, the willingness to, to help making the world better. So, uh, uh, Carlos, our first question will be, first of all, where, where did your inspiration come from? How, the, how, how, how can we become like you? <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. I think you are yourself doing an amazing job as well to, to make the world a much better place for all of us and future generations. So this is a meeting of minds, people then they really truly want to make a change. And I think uh, due to the fact that te technologies are converging and we are going into a new digital renaissance, this is the real time to do so. I mean, we need to inspire new generations that now they have the tools which we didn't have when we were their age to make a change and make a difference. So, you know, as you said, I, I was lucky to be in Geneva when the web was developed by the CERN. You know, actually I was sitting on the UN computing centers and, and we were all just fascinated about that potential that the web will decentralize the power of information from silos, which was before the web, to decentralization, websites, free access. It was an amazing uh, moment in the history of humankind because then we realized that billions of people could access information in an uncompromisable way and in a way that they could use that information to even generate more knowledge and contribute and exchange the knowledge between themselves. So, so that was 32 years ago that happened in Geneva and, and that was inspirational. But at the same time, Technology is like fire. It can warm your house, but it can burn your house as well, right? Depends how you use it. At the same time, we, we started to realize that this infrastructure, if that gets what it is now, a $20 trillion economy, it will be subject to all sorts of abuses. And, and the number of first abuse, the one that obviously is the one has become the business model, is the human, the person, or self. We have a huge value on the internet. Or consent, which is the consent that normally we do on every day, like letting your friends come into home for a dinner. You provide a consent for coming to have a, a dinner in your house, but that consent is within a time frame and conditional. And once you invite them to dinner, that's it. They cannot come every night to dinner, right? You only invite them once. We don't have that consent on the internet. When people start to use our data or people start to data mine us with artificial intelligence, when people start to uh, treat us as a product, then we do not have the capability to withdraw that consent. We are giving consent by default. And that was the big problem of the uh, generation of the internet. Human has become a product. And as a consequence, we are suffering the, you know, what we talk about sustainable development goals, it's an amazing endeavor, but before we are able to deploy them, we have to unleash that, I will call control platform has on human. And that's what YSK does, you know, our vision was uh, you have a birth certificate when you burn, you know, you, 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 you burn in a city, you get a birth certificate. This is not conditional to nationality or to bank accounts or anything. It's you as a human, you, you get your, your birth certificate. We need a birth certificate to enter the internet. The first day that we become digital means or persona or, or, uh, or uh, digital self. That day you need to have a digital certificate, which is associated to you. And that was the beginning of the wise game. I mean, I, I tried to do it in the UN, to be honest with you, but the UN is, 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 uh, you know, it's a governmental organization, uh, with, with a very slow process. So I said, okay, let, let's build a company around that. And, and I created WiseKey. WiseKey means World Internet Security. I also created a foundation with the name uh, International Organization for Secure Electronic Transactions, which is a uh, United Nations ECOSOC NGOs. And, and we are working, as, 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 as you know, we met you in Davos with the World Economic Forum. Actually, this week is the Davos Dialogue for the Great Reset. So we are discussing those subjects in live. Also with uh, this week as well, I mean, this is an important week uh, uh, where your event is happening because we also have the uh, Future I I Investment Initiative, the FII in Saudi Arabia, which is, uh, is, is equivalent to the to, to Davos, uh, and also creating a huge amount of awareness about putting human at the center of gravity. And this is essential. If we are able to return to the human, that power the human should have on itself, then we can connect to the fourth industrial revolution. Fourth industrial revolution is happening now. 
things are getting connected to the internet. We have one trillion objects to be connected to the internet. We need to put microprocessors in those objects. Wiseki does that as well. We need to uh, establish uh, quality data to avoid fake data. So data should come from authenticated devices all the way to cloud. So then artificial intelligence can uh, analyze that data and take predictability analysis and being able to provide a much uh, sharp uh, uh, study on, on the data they are analyzing, behavior of cars, sustainability on crops, agricultural research, education, health, all that is data. We are entering into a data society. Data is where you can very easily, if you are able to analyze data, you can take uh, the, the real decision as a management, politician, doctor, or whatever you are. And, and data is available now. I mean, we, we are creating petabytes of data per second now. And that data before, we didn't know to do what to do with. It was equivalent uh, when, when we didn't know how to use oil, we didn't know, and then we created an energy, or when we didn't know how to use solar energy, now we are able to exploit solar energy. So we are entering into the society where we are learning how to use data. And that's gonna change totally the way we are gonna think, we're gonna take decisions, and the way we're gonna be able to solve problems. There is a, a very serious belief that the, uh, the 17 sustainable development goals, if you, we just add AI on it, we will accelerate drastically and radically the execution of those sustainable development goals, which many of them, by the way, during the COVID situation has been challenged, has been reduced as an impact, has been slowed because the COVID obviously is taking all the attention of the world. The uh, data that we are also COVID obviously is a terrible situation. We are working with many governments because Wiseki is helping them to serialize the uh, the uh, apps that uh, takes data from you, from your COVID analysis. Also the uh, apps that let you go into airplanes as a way to prove that you have uh, you had a COVID test or you have a vaccination test. So we are working with many international organizations, such as IATA, WHO and others, trying to figure out how we can create a society then we'll use that data in a wise way and without being detrimental to the person. I mean, people say that in 20 years time, when you look back into 2019, 2020, you will forget about COVID, but you will say it was in 2019, the surveillance society started. We are in a very risky moment now because, uh, and, 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 and it was actually Akira mentioned in your previous uh, speech, uh, we are part of this uh, uh, global uh, experiment. It's the first ever socioeconomic experiment where we're gonna be not only uh, injecting ourselves a liquid, then all six billion people will be injecting themselves. Imagine the psychological uh, barriers that we are breaking not only by just using a smart car or a mobile phone, now we are willing to let somebody injecting something in our body because that thing is essential for our survival. So, so this socioeconomical experiment, which is involving the entire world, needs to be done properly. And we need to put the right safeguard. AI, as I say, can reduce the time of execution of sustainable development goals, but AI is also biased. AI can be dangerous as well if you don't know how to do it properly. We are integrating AI in our capabilities. AI can take decisions by themselves. AI could very soon, once we reach singularity, which is the moment on where computers will be more intelligent than we are, could basically take decision or against us humans, right? So as, as we were able to do in other sectors, like in uh, atomic energy, atomic bombs, we managed as a human to master technology in a way that technology will not convert into a weapon against us. So this is the timing now. And what you're doing with those events and many other events internationally is essential because more you younger you are, less concerned you are about the potential threats on technology. Your consciousness get reduced. So when, when the new millennials or the new generation enter into the internet and buy an iPhone or get into Instagram, their consciousness is being reduced to nearly zero about the dangers on where they are entering into it. So we need to educate them. We need to explain them from where this technology came from. Where was the ground zero of this technology? Who owned that technology? How this technology has been evolving? What have been the business model for them to use this technology for free. So, so this, this education needs to be done. 
because these millennials in the future will become the next leaders, the next CEOs, the next ministers, the next presidents, and they will be taking decisions from their own uh, from their own constituencies. So it is essential that education is is being done. Actually, I wrote a book, you know, in Davos with the name Transhuman Code. Uh, this is this book has been uh, published in China now. I, I am maybe the first author that is able to deploy this book in Chinese version. Because this book it says exactly what I am just explaining now is that human needs to control back again their identity. We need to be at the center of our ecosystem and we need to be sure that whatever happens on the internet, whatever renaissance is going to happen uh, as we are blending AI, blockchain, IoT, inter artificial intelligence, all that is getting blended. And it was the case in the Renaissance, you know, in uh, Leonardo da Vinci time where music, uh, mathematics, art, culture got together and that was a quantum leap evolution for humanity. We are in that process now, but we need to be conscious that it's a huge benefit if we do right, it's a re huge risk if we do wrong. Carlos, well, I think, I think all what you say is, 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 uh, is very profound. It's, it's, it shows that, first of all, there is a before uh, 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 happening for the current time and and we need you know like to 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 learn from uh, uh, the different you know like stages of development and, and indeed you know like as you say for us for our generation and i see books you know uh, 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 on your back uh, it will be you know like just like a, i would say a most ridiculous you know to read the book on a computer i was yeah. one of the person to say that i will i will never read a book on a computer it's like for me it's something but now yeah. We see the new generation. For them, it's it's just there, you know. It's just it's just natural. So 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 I think that indeed in the in the, in the process of evolution, there is a, 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 in that term uh, actually a, a very vast range of possibilities, which include as well big challenges, risk, and and even a possibility of demotion. So so in that respect, I think that what what you are uh, you you are a, a representative of something which is very special, which is you have been, you know, like uh, serving, you know, like uh, 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 being a public servant uh, 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 in an international organization. So, so your, your first passion was to serve humanity. And, and, and uh, additionally to that, you enter the arena of, uh, of, of the private sector because you wanted, you know, to convey your passion uh, at the service of humanity. So now, as, as we are experiencing this year, which is last year was... What, what was was a, was a new set? It's a reset. It's a it's a new year with this pandemic. But at the same time, we see that elections are you know, like related now to data. Uh, uh, we see that uh, social media is capable, you know, to blacklist a, a, a president of normally the, the 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 top power in the world for whatever reasons. Uh, 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 so the world is changing. Things and force are uh, moving in ways which are completely imaginable, you know, like years ago. So as, as a representative of that, you know, balance and with YSK being, you know, like in, in a country which is serving, you know, like public diplomacy uh, through its neutrality, which is Switzerland, uh, uh, how can you play a role for bringing more confidence, more trust in that evolution? And, and what are the innovative, you know, like aspects that you are working on at the moment that can help humanity uh, have faith in the future, uh, 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 which can be, you know, like embracing both, you know, like humanity and technology working together in a balanced and harmonious way. Absolutely, Jonathan. Good question. So, so my, my my endeavor, whether I was in the UN and now in the private sector, although I am very much also involved with the uh, civil society. It's always the same, basically. I, I want to make sure that technology that is used because it's an amazing gift that has been given to us, but cannot, should not be abused. You know, the, let, let's put the limits on it. And to be honest, uh, when, when you look the, uh, the way technology is developing internationally in the United States, in China, which are the, now the techno superpowers, Europe needs to play a role, which we are not playing yet. Europe has been slow in, in developing what I call the uh, internet platforms. Internet platforms 
are, you know what is happening now with, with the new concept, with the name deplatforming you, which is uh, you, we don't like you anymore. You say something which is not uh, correct. We take you out of the platform and you have no voice anymore. So those platforms now are dominant in the United States and China. Those are the supra platform. It's like in, in a war context, if you talk about building a cyber war, that, that would be the, the only countries that they have the uh, uh, aircraft carriers than where planes can land. Europe doesn't have it. We are fractionated in Europe. So my, 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 my vision was, let's build the European platform. Actually, WiseKey has made acquisitions. We made three acquisitions. Lately, we made the acquisition of a leading AI company in, in Germany, which is number one AI company in Europe. And what we are building is the European platform. We want to have all the things we need in Europe, digital identity, blockchain technology, AI, capability of developing our own semiconductors. So we have an end-to-end -end platform that we are not dependable of anything else anywhere else. We stay in Europe. And this is going to be the world of the future. This internet next generation is going to build into pillars where you're going to have America mighty with 10 or 20 platforms. You're going to have Chinese, which are growing uh, as, as big as Americans. And then Europe needs to catch up. And that will create an equilibrium. Why? Because Europe might not be as good as Americans are in innovation. Americans are very fast in innovation. We are maybe less successful in creating ecosystems because China has 1.3 billion people. But we are very good in something they don't have, which is trust, which is the capability of injecting trust into the technology. So that means possibility of, uh, you know, GDPR has been a major success story. You know, why don't we apply GDPR everywhere? About EIDAS, which is the new uh, standard, European standard to run digital identities. Uh, there is absolutely no digital identity notion in the United States. And even worse in China, people don't have identities in those markets. So we need to think as an Europeans and then see, okay, what are the things we are better than anybody else? And let's build a, a, a platform on the top of that. And this is the endeavor of wise game. And that, we have been pretty successful. The fight is huge, you know, because you're fighting against a $20 trillion economy that they would like to eat you alive if they could. And or resistance to the fight it was creates the motivation for me, my staff, and everybody that cooperates, because this is not only a technology play. This is because we need, the world needs equilibrium. If you are creating a bipolar society where only Chinese and American technology is going to be the one ruling the world, then we're going to be in trouble because humans will need to be protected and those models do not protect the humans. We need to build that alternative and this is an European play. Well, well, Carlos, I think this is this is paramount and, and uh, I, I hope and I wish, you know, uh, uh, this uh, this conversation will be, you know, like conveyed to some of our uh, uh, top uh, uh, government officials around the, uh, the world and especially in Europe. Uh, uh, yes. You know, Europe has a long history. We have, yes. we, have, we have a lot to learn from the mistakes and the great things that uh, were, you know, originated uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, uh, and sometimes we call that wisdom. And, and there is yes. European yeah. wisdom. Uh, and when I say European yeah. wisdom, I include as well all the Mediterranean uh, uh, countries uh, because yeah. Europe was about Mediterranean at some point. And uh, it was, you know, as well, the mixity of uh, uh, the various ethnicities and cultures. Uh, it was actually the balance between Rome and Carthage. It was yes. uh, the equilibrium uh, uh, between, you know, like uh, uh, Greece and uh, uh, Alexandria. So it's like... We, we had uh, so much uh, source of knowledge and so much source of wisdom that we have, you know, to, to, to play a role into shaping the, the, the future, at least with those major stakeholders that, that, that you mentioned. M maybe to, 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 to conclude, you know, our, our, our great and passionate exchange, uh, Carlos, uh, you mentioned about the new generation. And I would like maybe you to, to share some thoughts to them uh, uh, what will be your inspirational message to them? Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we are already, you know, like part of almost the past. We are still there on the present, but they are the future for sure. Uh, what will be the message you would like to convey to the, to the new generations? Uh, uh, because at the end of the day, this is going to be them. And, and we can be only, you know, like uh, serving their future through our current co contributions. 
Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I have uh, six kids, so I tell them all the day the same thing I cannot to tell you uh, about this uh, approach for new generation that although we are COVID, we are at lockdown at home, we cannot go out, we cannot share with friends. This is an unprecedented moment for the young generation to create value. I mean, when, when I created Wireski 22 years ago, I needed something like $150 million to start the company. I need to build my data center. I have to develop my own tools. I have to develop my own crypto. And, and everything was development from this crash. Today, the same company, you can do it for $20,000 because you don't have to develop anything. You just go and put your data on cloud. You go and take uh, open source software. You go and put co-location. So the cost of building a company around your innovation and your, and your ideas has become drastically lower. And, and that means that rather of spending days sending CVs to trying to find a job that you're not going to find now because we are in a crisis, which is going to take at least two, three years before that goes back again to normal. Create companies. Innovation in, in Europe is very low. I mean, the number of companies that we create is insignificant in comparison to the companies that you can create in the United States and China. And it's a huge reward of that. It might be tough at the beginning, but if you have a mission statement as a young person and you want to solve one of the problems the world has, and there are so many, you can make a lot of money around that, and you can at the same time make a lot of people happy, your friends, your family, your 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 students in the school. So my my I think we are in an unprecedented I would love to be today 20 years old because there are so many opportunities. There are so many things that we can change, and there are so many tools that can help us to do it. Think about AI only. AI can reduce my staff by 90%. I can do with AI things that I need hundreds of people. So efficiency is there. We are more or less clear about what we are trying to solve, which was not the case before. We know sustainability is, needs to be there. We need to clean the oceans. We need to improve the uh, distribution of food. We need to identify people and give them a, a birth certificate because they don't have, otherwise they are excluded from the economy. How many startups you can create around that? So I will say that rather than being pessimistic about COVID, which obviously is terrible, especially for the people and the lost family and members, it is a, a great opportunity to reinvent yourself, to, to just go and do it thinking that it is much easier now than it was before and there are more opportunity and it's more money people are always saying you know when people come to me and ask me how i found my company money follows ideas not the other way around ideas don't follow money money follows ideas so if you have a good idea and you know how to execute and then you will have thousands of people that would like to invest in your project so that's a message very optimistic message we are in the fourth industrial revolution this is the time where those companies can become world leaders and one day go to the NASDAQ, as I did it here, you know, with this uh, NASDAQ. I mean, I was the first company in Switzerland after Logitech that went to the NASDAQ. And we did it uh, in an amazing way because at the beginning, everybody told me it was impossible to do so. So that's the message for young people. Never, never give up, just do it. Carlos Moreira, thank you very much. It was a, uh, a, uh, uh, Again, like always, when uh, uh, I share, you know, like thoughts and what with you, uh, a sparkling of hope, sparkling of light, and a great momentum for uh, generations to come. Uh, uh, it will be a pleasure to continue the discussion in many other occasions. And as as we are, you know, like we are, you know, servant uh, for uh, building a more sustainable and inclusive future. And when I look at your team and what you have, you know, like built, uh, uh, I see, you know, like a lot of hope to leverage technology for the better of humanity. Thank you very much, Carlos. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations to you as well for the event. Super. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.